Hi folks, my name is Lauren and I'm on the DevRel team at Temporal. We just published the first version of our extension for VS Code. And in this video, we'll walk through using it. It improves the debugging experience for TypeScript workflows. And in the future, we'd like to add other languages, features, and editors. If you have ideas, open an issue in the GitHub repo, link in the description. So when you run a workflow function, each step it takes is stored in an event in a list called the event history. You can download a workflow's event history from the UI or CLI in a JSON file and have an SDK replay it. The worker calls your workflow function with the same arguments. The worker immediately resolves activity calls with the return values recorded in event history. And other things like timers going off and signals arriving happen in the same order they did previously. You can set breakpoints in workflow code to see what happened during the workflow's original execution. This ability to replay what happened during a function's execution, whether it's uh, on a coworker's machine or in production, is a great help to debugging. The Temporal VS Code extension improves the debugging experience of replay debugging. It allows you to load histories by workflow ID or JSON file, easily start a replay, and set breakpoints on events, not just code. So how do we use it? First, we install the extension. We are in Visual Studio Code. We install extensions, search for Temporal. And I already have it installed, but you hit the Install button here. Um, and now we need a workflow to, to debug. We can run this command to download and set up the sample code we'll be using. It prompts which, which sample we'd like to use. There are a number of them. We'll go down to the end of the list where we have VS Code Debugger sample. And it will uh, bring down the repo from GitHub install the dependencies, and initialize git. Uh, so this is a, a normal temporal TypeScript SDK project, except it also has um, one additional file called debug, debug replayer.ts, which I'll show you in a second. So here's a workflows file, worker, client activities, and here's the new file, de debug replayer. Um, start debug replayer creates a um, replay worker and communicates with the extension. Let's run a workflow so that we have a history to debug. We'll go back to the terminal and start the worker. And then in another terminal, uh, run a workflow. And now we can open the UI and see we have a workflow running with this history that we can download on the right to a JSON file. To start debugging in VS Code, run the command temporal open panel. Here we can, on the main tab, we can either enter a workflow ID or choose a history JSON file. So we will choose the one we just downloaded and hit start. So it automatically opens up the workflows code file and pauses on the first line. And we can see it uh, has an automatic breakpoint on the first history event. Um, so the, there are three workflow tasks in this uh, incomplete workflow execution. We know it's still running because in the UI, we see it's in running status. Um, and each workflow task has some events in it. And the first one is the, the workflow execution started event. And then we can see the next one is an activity task scheduled. So if we look at this workflow to see what it does, it gets a task string. It starts out with a verified, verified um, local variable set to false. We call this activity, notify human for verification, and give them the task. And then we and then uh, we set a handler for a verify signal. When we get that signal, we set verified to true. And uh, after we call the activity, set the handler, uh, we await we we wait until verified becomes true because it starts out false. So we're waiting for the signal to arrive. Uh, and then once it's arrived, uh, we sleep for a day, and then we do not call another activity. This is collecting feedback, and we can see through the from the event history uh, right the first thing that happens after execution started is we schedule an activity task and that makes sense because once we get to this line and we call the activity then activity tasks get scheduled um, the next one would be this activity task being completed in which case this will 
this promise will um, resolve and we'll go to the next line, we'll set the handler, and then we get to this line, await condition. Um, and then the next event that comes is a workflow execution signaled with the verify signal. So this function will run. And after signals are run, uh, signal callbacks are run, then all the conditions are evaluated. And so this function will be run, it'll return true. And then we'll this this condition will resolve and we'll go to the next line. And then we called sleep one day and that'll re return execution back to um, uh, the, the worker, which starts a timer with the server. And we can see that event in history. Uh, timer started one day. So we can reason about what happens just by looking at the code. Um, but we can also step through, uh, which is uh, useful, but uh, and also particularly useful when, when things get more complicated than this, this small, simple example. Let's, for example, set a breakpoint on uh, this line of code, await condition, and this line of code, await sleep. And then we can also set a breakpoint on this workflow task, which has the workflow execution signaled in it. So if we hit play, what do we get to? We go through the, uh, we, we, so we, we can see on the right side which workflow tasks we're currently inside. Uh, we were on the, the top one, now we're in the middle one. So this activity task completed happened. Um, we set up a handler, and now we got to this line of code uh, that we have a breakpoint on. And if we hit play now, we will hit this, the breakpoint on our history event. So we don't have a breakpoint on this line of code, but the next history event is execution signaled, so the worker is going to call this callback. Uh, so we're we're getting paused on the first line of that callback. We can also uh, see see what happens when we step through. So currently, verified is false. If we step over that line, verified becomes true. Um, and if we hit play again, we will um, uh, the condition resolved. So we went to the next line, and we hit this breakpoint on a wait sleep. And we can restart by uh, hitting this green button up at top, and we will end back up on the first line. If we can remove this breakpoint, then we won't stop here. If we remove this breakpoint, we can go straight to await sleep. And now if we uh, step over, uh, using debugger, you'd think you'd just wait here. Um, but in this case, we are replaying a past um, history. And the replay worker, once it gets through all of these history events, there's no more, um, it exits. So uh, that's why we're not uh, hanging right here. The easier way to start a debug session is by a workflow ID. So instead of downloading the JSON file and choosing it here, we can just put our workflow ID here. So we can look that up in the UI, copy it, paste it, and hit start and it will go to the server uh, on the on the default port on localhost, uh, download the history, and then start the debug session. We can point the extension to a different server address in the settings tab over here. Uh, and for instance, this if we, if we were connecting to Temporal Cloud, uh, then we would uh, put something here like namespace.accountid.temporal.cloud colon 7233. We'd check TLS and choose our uh, client cert and private key. So that's the extension. If you have any problems with it, please open an issue. We also welcome contributions. Please get consensus for what you plan to do in an issue before submitting your PR. Happy debugging.